What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema, and welcome to my 31 Days of Horror. In today's topic, we're going to talk about my five underrated horror films, at least to me. We all have the films that we are, are classics, that are iconic. Then there's the ones that we really like. But then there's the ones that we feel, or at least in my situation here, I feel do not get talked about enough, or maybe people haven't seen that I think you need to see man like really need to see so if you're new to the channel subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content like the video and all that jazz and we're gonna have a good time here just talking about five underrated horror films coming at number five is the movie frailty directed by bill paxton and starring bill paxton as a single father of two sons going through life regular life then one day an angel of the lord comes um, comes to him and says that he has to hunt down demons this movie's great, man, and it just does not get talked about enough. Bill Paxton's performance, his directing, you know, in the it takes place in the present where one of the brothers has all grown up and he's telling the story of all these murders that is, you know, his father committed. And then we see the story playing out in the past. And, you know, Bill Paxton being this, you know, mechanic, single father, just going through life. And then an angel of the Lord comes to him. The way it all plays out is that when he puts his hands on people, he could see all their sins and all their evil. It's frightening stuff because you have one, you got the two brothers. One of them really is buying everything, really believes that this is their, this is what God has set them out to do. And then the other brother is not believing it. He, he's this, he just sees his dad killing people. So it's compelling stuff. It's kind of like, you know, when, when when God told Abraham to kill his son and when he just about to do it, it was like this test of faith thing. It just asks that question of God asked you to do something as horrific as this. Would you do it? Well, it's a great movie. Do not do not pass this one up, man. Really go check out Frailty. Coming at number four is Oculus, directed by Mike Flanagan. This is one of his earlier works from 2013 and man when i first saw this i thought man this guy's going places and he has he's become one of he's become my favorite filmmaker oculus is a paranormal thriller about this haunted mirror the way flanagan sells it it's like the overlook hotel what if it was you could have that in your house whenever people are close to this mirror start staring at it and stuff like that bad shit happens so it is kind of shining like you know what i mean you see you see the father starting to succumb to madness and you see the mother go freaking crazy. You can see where the seed was planted for a haunting of Hill House because this is very similar going through two separate timelines. One where the kids are are in the past and in the present, right? When they try to destroy this mirror. I love Karen Gillian in this. She's so commanding and really has the character locked down. Alice later says she believed she was tucking the children into their beds as she sealed them in the cistern. She never recovers from her injuries. And oh, the family kept several dogs at the farm, including an Australian shepherd for the children. And the movie's just a gigantic mindfuck, really. It distorts reality that messes up with your mind, right? And the way Mike Flanagan just builds the tension here, you know what I mean? It's all about suspense and tension. There's no cheap jump scares. And when he does have a jump scare in there, it really works. There, there's one scene that, you know, when I saw it, I was like, man, that was so clever the way he did that. You see the father walking along and he stubs his toe on, kind of on a box or something. All right, we've had a jump scare. We can relax now. Then all of a sudden he starts walking and there's a ghost, bam, out of freaking nowhere. And then you just fucking jump when you first see it because you like, he put you into a false sense of security. When the guy stubs his toe, so you think, oh, that's the jump scare. The bang, he puts something out, out there. Very clever in the way he does his jump scares, but don't pass on Oculus. If you like paranormal thrillers, you'll love this one. If you like stuff like The Shining and stuff, this is really excellent. It's a really good movie. Coming at number three is Visiting Hours. This one stars Michael Ironside and Lee Grant. William Shatner and Linda Pearl, I believe. It is a slasher, but it's also about the killer. We've got this journalist and Deborah Ballin who, you know, pisses this killer off by, you know, she's a journalist. She's going on standing up for women's rights and everything. And this sets this guy off. He goes to kill her at her home. And that's the beginning of the movie. Then she ends, she ends up in the hospital and he spends the rest of the movie trying to go after her in this hospital. And you get other kills 
throughout the movie. He's really deranged. He really is off his kilter. But you, they go into him more about he had a traumatic event when he was a kid watching his um his, his mother hurt his father. And he takes care of his father. You don't know what happened to the mother. And so this is how, you know, this, this spawns this hatred for women. It really does have something to say about how violence just breeds more violence. And you have Deborah Ballin, who's a complete pacifist, who thinks violence doesn't solve anything. And she has to use violence at the end to get out of this situation. That's the only thing she she can resort to to stop this guy, right? It's a great performance by Michael Ironside because he does it's not like the a lot of the slashes in the 80s. He's not wearing a mask. It's just him. We find out who he is a, a little bit. There's some chilling and disturbing scenes in this. Just what this guy would do to get this woman out the hospital. Smashes his arm on a beer bottle so he's hurt. Ambulance comes, takes him to the hospital so he can get in. This is more built on tension and suspense. The jump scares work. They're really well crafted. So if you haven't seen Visiting Hours, um, I hope they work as well for you as they did for me, man, because uh, I've always loved this one, man, just because it's creepy, disturbing, and chilling. Coming at number two is Maniac from 1980. This is another one about the killer. He cuts their scalps off and puts them on mannequins and stuff like that, and he's he's deeply psychotic. He's deeply troubled. It goes deep into his past and how he became so troubled, right? And it's a great performance here by Joe Spinal, I think. He is fantastic in this. This is the way I just love this. The way he kind of snaps, like he's he's with a hooker in the hotel room or whatever, and he's and I don't think he really intended to kill her in this moment, but he's fine. He's sitting there with her. Then he snaps and he's talking to her like he's like it's his mother. You know what I mean? But I love it when they make it about the killer and we get to find more about them. Then so it, it it it's it's got a creepy feel to it. I love the practical effects by Tom Savini. I mean, if you like the gore, man, the gore is in here, but it's also got a real psychological component to it, too. At the end, the end blew me away, man. I did not expect this macabre style ending where all his victims that he killed are just come at him and they, they rip him the freaking pieces at the end and where he's at his mother's grave and her arms come out of the grave and pull him in. And it's it's all in his head and everything, but it's so dark and so macabre. You know what I mean? It's it was fantastic. It really. I thought it was really artistic the way they did it, man. So I love Maniac, man. And I just came to this movie pretty recently. So it's become one of my favorites. But coming at number one is Starry Eyes. This is a film that I find no one talks about. This stars Alex Esso as our lead, who is fantastic. She gives one of the best performances I've seen in a horror film. It really is about a, a a young starlet who discovers the ominous origins of Hollywood. She enters into this agreement that will give her all the fame and fortune she could ever want. This movie just dives into what would you do to get your dream? You know, you find her as this waitress. She's a struggling actress. She goes to read for a role for these people that all these people seem extremely sketchy. And what they end up being is this studio company ends up being a satanic cult. If she will do these things, which end up being sexual favors, they'll give her everything she ever wants. Hollywood may seem like it's full of glitter and glam and dreams and come to Hollywood. We will give you the dream. But this, what it takes to get that dream. That's the dark stuff, man. That's the real dark stuff. And I like how they they show us all this visually something to say about getting your dream. What will you sacrifice? I mean, if I only do this one thing, if I only do this one thing, this one time, I'll forget about it. I'll have everything I have ever wanted. But she doesn't also go through a mental transformation. She goes through a physical one where she gets completely sick and ill and all this kind of stuff, losing her hair. Then it turns into like a slasher film where the people who are wronged her or stealing roles from her, she just goes after and it gets vicious and brutal. And then when she transforms, she comes out of the ground almost like a vampire creature. And now she's the starlet. She puts her nice brunette wig on. She's, you know, she's she just looks different. She's the starlet now. She goes from the struggling actress to the starlet. But you get, it's it's layered, right, with the, 
this physical transformation. And I just love that about this movie. A lot to say about the shadiness of Hollywood and a lot to say about acquiring your dreams, but at what cost? And this is a fantastic psychological horror film that's more like Rosemary's Baby. You know, you know, Rosemary's Baby where the father, you know, makes the deal with the devil to do what he did to Rosemary. And then, then he becomes this big actor and all that. That's kind of like an extension of this. That's movie really tapping into that. So it's more Rosemary's Baby. And I just love the slow burn of it all. Fantastic movie, man. So that is it, guys. That is five underrated horror films that you need to check out. Comment down below. Let me know if you've seen any of these. We'll have a good discussion in those comments. Like the video. Share the video. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe if you like this kind of content. And I uh, hope you enjoyed 31 Days of Horror because I know I am. So stick around for more content coming soon, guys. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I will see you later, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.